right, super excited. We are doing a fall owl project today. This is straight up acrylic painting. Easy, fun for fall. You know, every time I grab a new background, it's like, oh, this will be nice and fresh and look beautiful. And then I trash it in like one project. And I'm like, and there goes that idea. All right, so this is gonna be really, really fun. It's gonna be super fall. Um, I'm using this little owlette as my reference. This is a royalty free stock image cartoon. And I am using, oh, I also have giveaway. Okay, so Arteza is giving away this 12 by 12 multi-pack set of canvases as well as a giant pack of paint. Um, they are giving it away. So there's a couple of things you have to do, however, to be entered into the giveaway. You have to, and this all the link for what where you need to go and what you need to do is all in the description box below. So if you want to play and be entered, you have to go to this one specific video of theirs and like leave a comment and subscribe to the Arteza YouTube channel as well as this one. And if you do those things and you come back to this video and you tell me that you have done those things, then you'll be entered to win both the multi-pack of canvases as well as a giant pack of 14 large tubes of Arteza acrylic paint. I don't have them here because I actually already sent them away to someone on the last time I did a 30, my 30K giveaway. Um, Arteza had sent me products to demonstrate and then they were going to send the winner those like the, like directly from Arteza headquarters those same prizes and because I didn't follow the rules and tell you guys to go subscribe and go leave a comment then they were not willing to give away the prize so I donated my own supplies to the winner to make sure that they were still given a prize for entering the giveaway so um, I thought I would play along this time while I don't mind giving away products, not well, not at all, and it was a great cause for celebration. Um, I don't have the, the same things to give away because I already gave them away. So let's play the game correctly and then Arteza will reward us uh, accordingly. So I am using, the, this is an Arteza adorable square, 12 inch square canvas. I I think that the canvases that they're donating are 10 inch squares. I can't remember, but I think that's what I ended up mailing away. And the paints I'm using today are actually from my own personal signature paint set um, that I sell through uh, Jerry's Artorama. And this is the Whimsical Animals. I have three sets of paints that I, like paint kits that I sell and one drawing kit that I sell there. I don't sell them, Jerry sells them, but they're, they're colors that I've picked personally because um, I've been using this brand forever and ever. So these are um, some of the paints that, are, that you get with the Whimsical Animals Signature Paint Kit. And I'm using all of them in today's project, so that's pretty cool. Um, don't need to go out and buy anything, just letting you know. Um, let's get started. So again, this is our little thing. There's our little guy, however, uh, I'm going to change up the colors so it's like super duper more fall. So for the background, I'm going to do blues. And then the tree is going to be a combination of the burnt umber and the yellow ochre. And then the scarf, I think, should be like green, maybe green and the indigo for fall. And that will be all of the colors. So without further ado, let's get started. If you buy the big, big kit, it actually comes with my favorite brushes as well. Also comes with a big pack of canvases. So let's get started. We have our canvas here. Um, I'm gonna start with, all right, so use whatever paint colors you have. And I'm just going to, like this is cerulean blue. I like Lucas, they're super affordable. They're equivalent in value and in viscosity and in price to like Liquitex Basics. So they're super good value, um, you know, very affordable, but you also get like a ton, which is nice. Well, I kind of like it just says this. I might just make it plain. Sometimes less is more, you know what I'm saying? I'm just getting a lot of, this is just pleasing to me. I'm going to just make this really, really, um, really simple and straightforward. So 
So cover your whole canvas. Make sure all the little white is covered up so there's no canvas peeking through. Super fast and easy. And of course you wanna make sure the edges are painted as well. I don't know how artists have such a clean backdrop. Like I, I honestly and truly wanna know how. <laughs> it like sucks the joy out of my project to be careful. So that's out, that's not an option. <laughs> Is if that's the solution, I'm not in. I'll just keep being a mess, but forgive me. I am self-conscious of my messy background because other artists' channels are just so, they're just so beautiful and like color branded and I'm a hot mess. But like, it's painting and mixed media art. Like it's supposed to be a hot mess, isn't it? All right, so once every ounce of this canvas is painted and I gotta paint over my finger marks so they don't show. I do like to kind of, and I like to use a lot of paint. I think people err on the side of way too little paint, like they're precious. And then it's hard to blend, doesn't flow. So use a lot of paint and then you can really like spread it freely. You can get all your brush strokes running in the right direct, in the same direction, which is, makes it look really uniform. I get, um, no, I like it when it's all like even Steven. It's just satisfying. All right, boom. All right, I'm gonna take my hair dryer and just dry this and then we'll move right on to the next step. All right, so that's all dry. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint. Look, I'm covered already. We just started. We're gonna paint the tree. I'm like having flashbacks of my cute little girls and painting, painting with them all those years ago. Just some really fun times. All right, we're gonna scoop out. We're gonna scoop out the burnt umber. That's gonna be the lion's share of this, but then to like create a little interest so it's not just like, like flat one dimensional. Not that this is like crazy realistic or anything because it's so not. Uh, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of the yellow ochre or the, yes, the yellow ochre. Just to spice things up a little. Um, I just did my last video was on brushes. So if you have brushes questions, um, you can refer to last week's, um, actually this brush is way too small for that. I just like, I'm super lazy with my brushes. Oh, uh, I usually use like one kind of brush for the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. All right. So we have the brown and we're going to do on the right hand side super straight onto the canvas. You can wrap the edges if you want to or not. And we're just gonna do um, solid, solid strip on the side. If you wanna make it like larger at the bottom, totally optional, but you can. Looks awesome against the blue. Just gonna wrap the edges, you know, so it's super realistic because I'm really into realism. Just kidding. All right, and then we're gonna have a branch going probably like a, a quarter of the way up. Maybe slightly less than a quarter of the way up and I usually just like swing it around. Very, very straightforward. And then kind of, and this can be big, it can be skinny, like does not matter. And before this dries, cause it's already starting to dry, you want to get in there with a little bit of this, um, of the yellow ochre. Clean your brush and while it's still wet, cause we were, it's called dry blending. And you're literally just like running it up through there just to like give it some dimension so it's not just like so solid just because we can feeling fancy and if it's like too much and you're like oh god what have i done you just add more brown back in <laughs> it's super easy to you can go back and forth you can get fussy with this all day or you can go you know quick 
quick and dirty, which is my favorite approach. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can start doing little curly cues like they did. Or you can be really simple and just leave it just like this. I might even just like, you know, have a secondary branch. Just, just doing just that. And like, that's it. So easy. Little more zoos through there. You know, zoos it. <laughs> I like to create my own super technical terms. We're gonna zoos this side. Oh, I forgot one of my lights is not on. That's better. Super sorry oh. about that. All right, look at this masterpiece we rock in. All right, now I'm gonna take my hair dryer. I'm gonna dry that now. All right, we are already moving to move on. So I think I've shared with this, this little hack with you before. I just take um, just regular school chalk when I'm planning out my acrylic painting designs because it erases like really cleanly. So I'm gonna just, look how cute it is already and it's just a circle. I can't even stand it. I love owls. All right, so we have this, so he's just a circle. And then let's see, I'm just planning this out. His eyes or her eyes will be like here and here. Oh my God, so cute. And then they're not, they're not really circular, so I'm just gonna maybe bring the upper corners out a little bit. And then of course they have little owly, eerie things. And this one has a little boomp there. And then the eyes. So this helps you like plan it out because if you're like, ooh, I don't really like that look, then you can like, boop. Oh, now I just see boobs. Now I can't unsee the boobs. Maybe we'll put a beak in there. Sorry, ladies, I just call it like I see it. We'll put a beak in there. And then maybe the eyes can be, you know, larger. And then we'll have like the whites of them. Now I don't see boobs anymore. Okay. And then we can have the little scarfy scarf. Because it's cold. I wish it was cold. I took a walk yesterday and I got like totally sunburned. I'm like, ugh, North Carolina. You are so annoyingly hot for so annoyingly long. I've lived <laughs> I'm from Boston, but I've lived here for, I don't know, 13, 14 years. And I like still am mad that it's so hot. <laughs> I can never get over it. I'm like some just like teen, grumpy teenager about the weather. I love it nine months of the year. And then the rest of the time, I'm like, seriously, enough with the heat. <laughs> like I've had enough. <laughs> Do boo boo. All right. So there's a little scarf. Oh my God, he's so cute. And then we have this. This is just so cute and I haven't even painted him yet. So cute. And then the bigger the eyes, you know, really the better. The cuteness factor goes up many quotients. All right. Hmm. I'm trying to think what I should paint first because there's very little actual body to be painted. I think I'm actually going to do the scarf first because it's on top. And then I can have some of the feathers going on top of the scarf, if that makes sense. Um, and I realized I had the wrong green out here as well. So I think I'm gonna use, I have, yeah, I have the olive green out. Actually the sap is what comes in the kit. So I didn't wanna make sure I was using the right thing. So you're not like, um, I got my kit, it's not the same colors. That would be really poopy. So I'm trying to think. The owl's gonna be orange and that, and then this could be this and, oh, maybe the dark. Or it could be like white and green striped. That would be really, really cute. Yeah, cause I don't, yeah, that would be cute. Okay, <clears throat> so I think what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna have white and green and I want them to really pop, is I actually am gonna gesso first because it's hard to get white to cover over the scarf. So it's a great application for gesso. And I can also gesso the areas where the eyes are going to be as well. So I'm gonna grab my gesso. Um, and this is the actual gesso that comes with the Awesome Art School kit. And I talked about brushes for gesso in last week's video. So you know I have dedicated brushes just for gesso. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So this will make it easier for the white and the green, which both are, um, well, when they're covering, they're going on top of a darker color like this blue, the coverage sometimes isn't as awesome as it could be if it was going over a different color. So the gesso just kind of reprimes this and makes it easier for the paints to cover. You could also just, instead of gesso, just do more coats of the color if they don't, if they're not covering to your satisfaction and that is totally, totally fine too. <clears throat> it's all good. So we're just gonna paint. This is the, maybe there'll be like some tassels going on there as well. But the chalk helps me so much. And then it just kind of wears away like as you paint. So that's, that's pretty neat. It's kind of fluffy. Staying warm and cozy. Hooray! So warm and cozy. And then of course it's gesso, so it dries super fast. And then we could also gesso, which I might do the eye area again, because um, you have options. You can do just a couple coats of the white, but I already have my gesso out anyways, so I can just bang it out while I'm here. There's the little nose. There's the other eye. Owls are legitimately like the cutest animal. My youngest son, Max, <laughs> he, he's on Reddit a lot. Reddit is, I feel like, the Facebook for kids. And he follows this, this cute animals like feed. And so we have this fun little tradition where every time we get to a stoplight when we're in the car, and if there's no one else in the car, so he'll be in the front seat with me and he'll flash me cute animal pictures at red lights. And it's like, I like have the biggest cute attacks in the whole world. So I, so then I got on Reddit cause I was like, I want to make sure Reddit's like a safe place. Cause all three of my kids hang out on Reddit so much. And I'm like, I just want to make sure it's like, you know, not a sketchy platform to hang out on. So then I started following the cute animal. There's like, it's literally called like, aw, like A-W, <coughs> aw animals. And now I'm like chronically sending him like cute attack pictures. Now we have, so now we send them to each other, but oh man, there's one of like an owl, like, oh, I can't even, I can't even, just so many. Okay. All right. I'm going to dry this and then we'll be back to paint. All right, that's dry. And then I'm gonna get my green out. <clears throat> and I'm gonna get my white out. Let's see if we can stripe this bad boy cutely. Should have washed my brush first with not the camera on. All right, so I'm gonna do green and I'll probably will outline <clears throat> this as well so it's nice and crisp I'll probably take some paint markers and outline so they really punch off the canvas just like a nice thick broad outline so there's a couple different ways you can do the stripes I mean I could do like the whole thing green and then come back and stripe with a white which might be easier, might be better. We shall see. Don't really know. I'm not good about like doing projects once off camera to make sure I do them exactly perfectly and then <laughs> come back. I'm just like a bang it out kind of girl. <laughs> and then this would be probably green under here. And then the stripes would switch directions this way. 
And my hand is now sticking to something on the right hand side, so it must not be dry. Awesome. So there's one stripe and two stripes. And three stripes. And if you notice, <clears throat> when I do straight up acrylic um, projects, there's a lot of drying between layers. It's the easiest way to make sure everything is sharp and you don't make a muddy mess anywhere. It just keeps all your layers really separate and fresh and crisp. Um, let's see, oh geez, now there's stripes behind. I'm gonna do the rest of this side first so I don't get confused as to what is where. Maybe we'll just make this all the way to the end green. And then this one. I love the smell of acrylic paint. Is that weird? Actually, I love the smell of Arteza's acrylic paint. It's a really good smell to it, but so does Lucas. And also, so does Matisse. I really like the smell of Matisse paint. Super weird, I know. Oh, that should be a fatter white band in the middle. Too late now. We are going with it. Very much a work in progress. We have a lot of work to do still, but it shouldn't take too long. Again, I'm gonna blow that dry and then we'll do the white. So I'm a little worried that the white is gonna be, is gonna compete with the rest of the owl. So I'm rethinking, I think I'm gonna do the stripes, the indigo. Um, because that way the scarf isn't going to take away attention from the rest of the cuteness attack. That is the rest of the owl. So it, yeah, knocks back the scarf a little bit. But here goes on the little cute little stripies. So cute. And I was saying this in my brushes video the other day, it's hard when you have the curved ends because now it's hard to make the crisp ends on my stripes. That's why I prefer a flat brush, but I really love, love these Pro Stroke brushes because they're so nice and crisp. And they keep an edge super nicely so I can kind of compensate by holding it lengthwise and I can make that adjustment with my paint pens at the end. Some big fat outlines. I'm an outliner. Are you guys, let me know in the comments if you are an outliner or not. I like, I used to debate about this and for some reason, especially before I got into mixed media and I was just painting for many years, I, felt badly about the need to outline. Isn't that weird? Why would you feel bad? And that was actually one of the revelations I had when I started working with mixed media was that all of the different tools and supplies like gave you permission and it made outlining so easy. Uh, outlining with a paintbrush is super hard. Um, and I'm not a detail person like at all. And so it was really a struggle and trying to keep a really like thin liquidy paint on the end of a paintbrush was really challenging. And I did it forever. I did a lot of murals. I did commercial murals as well. Um, and it was super hard. And I wish I could go back in time and be like, here, here's the Posca pen. Like now mural it up because you have the same, you know, paint pens are just acrylic paint. I make this like, a, I don't like these edges that I have. I'm gonna make these just like, you know, a, whatever this is called, frayed. Um, and so, yeah, it just, I don't know. I felt, I felt bad. I felt like it was cheating if I wasn't using a paintbrush on any of the pieces, just weird, like mental. <laughs> mental things I would tell myself, like who cares? Um, so yeah, so mixed media, I write this, 
I write about this in my mixed media magic book was like, it would like change my life to be like, oh, not only don't feel bad, but like here's eight choices of tools that can make that job super easy. It's like, what? Rocked my whole world in the best way possible. So I will definitely be using um, paint pens to help me because why wouldn't you make want to make the job easier? And um, that's what I will be doing. So this kind of the fact that it's like messy and globby right now would used to stress me out because I would be thinking to myself like, oh God, I need to go and touch this up with like a really fine paintbrush and that's gonna take hours and hours and hours and it's detail oriented and I hate that. And it's like, just put a paint pen in your hand, done, we'll fix it at the end. All right, I'm gonna dry this again and we're gonna keep going. All right, so we are on to the eyes. I think I'm gonna use, I don't think I like the yellow in the eyes. I'm gonna just go for the white. And then, you know, you can always add yellow on top of it. Um, I'm just gonna try white, see? And because I have the gesso down, it go, this covers like super nicely. So that's a little hot tip for me to And of course, if you don't have gesso, that's fine. You can just do two coats of paint. You can also, if you have trouble making your circle, I mean, it doesn't even matter. If the circles aren't the same size, it's honestly just gonna add to the cuteness factor. But if you have trouble with circles, just, um, just circ like trace a mug or a bowl all about just whatever makes the job easy, right? Okay. The Lucas white is really nice. It's pretty opaque as far as white goes. And I also like it. A lot of white paints I find either too transparent or they're too thick. And so I like the Lucas white because it's the really nice consistency. And it's got really good coverage. So you still might have to do a coat here or there, but that's very typical of pretty much every uh, paint brand. But not too shibby shabby. All right. Now I'm gonna um, do the owl. He's so cute. I really like this color. And I think I'm gonna, I think the orange might be too, well, the orange, again, in every brand doesn't cover very well. Um, this one, however, I, 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 it does. And I think this, I think I kind of like this color scheme a little bit better than just the orange because orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel and they really make each other pop, which kind of now that I'm looking at this, I'm feeling more like doing this. I just feel like it. <laughs> it's more muted fall. Um, versus like primary children's. Oh, and I guess because my kids are a little bit older now, um, I don't have that same tendency to do like super little kid things, but you can do whatever, whatever you like on yours, obviously. Um, if you want to do orange, do it. Okay. My scarf, my scarf's pretty dry, my eyes are wet, but if I start down here, now I might swirl in some of the darker brown, the same brown that I find in the tree. And again, because it's going over the blue, the coverage might not be 100 million percent. You can always gesso first as well, but I'm gonna just see how this goes. You can also do, um, actually I really like that, I just, Put my brush in the darker brown but I actually like the yellow ochre kind of all by itself. There's some over here. Sticking out there. So if I want to make the little texture look I can actually do this stripe first and then kind of blot on top of it. It doesn't really matter it's like this cute little Cartoon owl, anyways. Okay. 
but it does look furry if you do make a pouncy kind of motion with your wet brush, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> Um, same thing, like we can circle the eyes. I'll probably use a paint pen again to like round the eyes, make them smooth and whatnot. Um, right now I'm kind of enjoying this little pouncy motion I started. It's just, just felt like pouncing. They are really little feathery things. So I feel like it's okay if we do that. I'm just gonna ring around with the color. And then get some little pouncy stuff going. Also makes the paint cover better by doing that. And you might also be wondering like, why do gesso instead of doing white paint? And the answer is that, and you can feel the difference, like this is a acrylic dries to this smooth plasticky surface. And so the other color paints don't just sit on top in a different way than they do when they go on top of gesso. So when you paint on top of gesso, the gesso like absorbs the paint. So it's a different application feeling and also the paint sticks better on top of it. actually need to put the feathers here. I could actually have the scarf going up to the eyeballs now that I think about it. But as I like to say, too late now. <laughs> and then wing. Oh, so cute. I'm just going to make these really abrupt, kind of just floppy little paintbrush swirlies. Oh man, just so stinking cute. Maybe I tap some of the darker brown in. Just for no reason that I can even think of, except I feel like doing it. I feel like it. I like giving it a little bit of difference there, I guess. And the nose is going to be here. Sorry, the tappy is probably super annoying on camera. I do apologize for that. Oh, Owly, you're just the cutest thing ever. Obviously, if you're working on a canvas board or a piece of wood, you don't have the little bouncy thing that I got going on. <laughs> because my canvas is stretched. But it doesn't mean you still can't pounce. Bounce away. Oh, the little owlet, little hairs are just so darn cute. Oh my goodness. Cute attack, all right. All right, I'm gonna just take my hair dryer and go to the next step. All right, I showed you this little trick in when we did the big um, live Halloween painting I did a week or two ago. Um, I taught you my little pouncer trick um, and I do the same technique. So I, told, I mentioned before I used to teach kids and this was my cheat with them for making perfect circles for eyes, polka dots and backgrounds, suns, moons, anything that you need a really like perfect circle for. Um, you can use this one. I'm trying to think. I feel like it's a little bit cute if they're a little bit turned into each other, meaning the pupils. So what you do is you take these little stencil pouncer, pouncers, you, you get a good even coat, and then you place it down and then you give it a twist. And twisting it helps like fill in all the blanks. And yeah. So there's no way, if you just stamp it, there's a lot of times there's like, it won't cover. So twisting it helps just like cover all the spaces better. That makes sense, super easy, super fun, total success. Again, I'm gonna dry this. 
All right, now it's like detail time. So I'm actually using Arteza paint markers. I love Posca's too, but I've had these for a while and I like them. They have really big nibs and this is like a perfect project for such a large nib like that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go for it. So I'm going to start by outlining this green is like so perfect. Um, outlining the scarf. And it just leads to this like very fun, cartoony look. And you can also kind of make some corrections because it's the right color. So any oopses, you can kind of like fix this way. Green is really matches the screen really well. Not that I care that much, but I mean, I don't want a different color, right? So again, this thought of doing this used to be like, isn't that cheating? And the answer is no. <laughs> Use your tools. Easy is better. Easy is fun. Okay. At least in my world it is. All right. You can even like go over these areas if they need a second coat. I mean, I'm right here. Might as well. It's literally the same color green. So you can do as much or as little layering as you want. Do, 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 do. This part is looks really too light. <laughs> kind of like spray spray paint cans a little bit. It's good to kind of sh shake them once in a while. A little warm, snuggly scarf, and that is actually the chalk and not the not the gesso. So it can, if you need to do a second coat, you totally can. Yeah. Even put some lines in the little tassely parts. Wanna make that a little, a little extra bonus cute. All right, this color is yellow ochre, which is literally the same color as my little owl guy. So I'm gonna just swoop some swoops around him. You can make little dots if you wanted to. But again, rather than I'm so bad about details, I really struggle, but the pen just makes it like easy peasy. So you could put some little polka dots. You could also outline his eyes a little bit better. If you didn't get a crisp outline with your brush, you can do it much more easily with this marker. Put some polka dots again around. This helps kind of like Fine tune the outline. <laughs> Don't do what I just did, which is drag your hand through it. <laughs> Don't do that. Yes. Dum dum. <laughs> All right. Some little polka dots. 
go in there. All right, we need to paint his nose. He's got no nose. All right, I'm gonna try it in this color. This is like elephant gray. I mean, if it doesn't work, oh, it is working. I might change it. Oh, he's so cute. His little nosy nose. It's like a triangle with a circle at the end there. And I'm also, where's this? I'm also thinking if I can, oh yeah, I like that. Like just drag this paint pen down the tree. Just here or there. And then we also need to, I wonder how this gray would look. Where'd it go? Maybe in a little fur too. Just cause he's cute and polka dotty and you can't really see that very well when it's all the same color. Now I'm gonna use my smaller circle spongy thingy. <laughs> to do like that pupil eye shine things. So there and there. Ooh. And then I can even have another one here or maybe one in, I think I'll do a full circle inside. Like how easy is that? So easy. All right, um, I still want more outlining and these Arteza nibs now are getting too big. So I brought out my other paint pen friends. So Sharpie is like one size smaller and then Posca has a ton of nib sizes. Um, so I'm just picking one out. This The Sharpie one is kind of like between the fat Arteza and this too skinny Posca. So I like it, it's right in the middle. Um, and you can add kind of all sorts of outlining, but I really find to be outlining very satisfying and it's a super personal like preference. Some people never outline and some people outline everything. Some people are like me where I just like it. This scarf is looking super amateur hour <laughs> to me. And I'm hoping, I think that the outlining will actually help with this. And again, I think it's because the outline was originally too thick. That's what I wanted, but now I'm not loving the effect. So I'm gonna try outlining it with this. I'm trying to put, I wanna make sure that wherever I lay my hand, um, I'm not gonna be, I'm not, spreading paint everywhere and as far as outlining typically goes it's better if if you start it one place you typically have to carry it through to the rest of the piece or it looks weird so like you wouldn't outline the tree and then leave everything else not outlined, if that makes sense. So just to bring that consistency through. I see what's driving me crazy. It's, yeah, this green, like I want the stripes to go across. I'll have to see if I have a paint pen that's in that same color. But this is super easy to do anyways. I already like him better. Make sure that nose is dry. So I can outline the nose. Boop. Yep, looks better already. But now I'm kind of committed and I have to go everywhere. Now I'm wondering, I feel like now I should trace the eyes because if, if you're outlining and then you go wonky, 
Ah, that doesn't look awesome. So I do have a, I have a ton of circle templates, but I didn't use one to create these. So now I'm like, oh, I'm a little screwed. Um, this is what I start like hunting around my room for circles that are the same size. Like, is that the same size? Oh, I give, I'm just gonna have to freehand it. We are in it too deep now. Okay. Sometimes it's helpful to just hold your breath. <laughs> I just don't breathe. Don't breathe. No breathing. Oh God, it's so scary. Oh, see it went a little er right there. <laughs> Nothing I can do. Okay, holding your breath with me out. Oh, yeah, see, and it's like thick there and thin there. Oh, oh, no. All right, this is why I always have to, I don't even know where that, oh, I know why, because the pupils are still wet. This is why you always work with wipes next to you, by the way. Just have your wipes nearby. <laughs> You'll be okay. And don't forget that there's white, fresh white paint down, girlfriend. This is why I dry between layers and I didn't dry the pupils. Uh, uh, ugh. Woo! So stressful. Oh, I like them a million times better. Okay. Now I'm gonna do, again, if you start with this outlining process, you are committed and you need to keep it going. So now he kind of needs to be outlined everywhere. Boop. Oh my God, but what a difference that makes. You can even put some cuteness factor in here. Oh crap, <laughs> have, where's my wipe? Now I have black paint here. Where am I smearing it from? I don't even know. All right, then we're gonna do this little curly cue. I can do the same dots up here that we did in the other colors. And this, my friend, is finally coming together. All right, except this scarf is really annoying me, although it's way better outlined, um, for sure. Let's see, I wish I, I don't have that dark blue. I'm gonna see if I have any in my Posca pen. All right, I think I found, I think I thought up a way that'll make me hate the scarf left less, which is, I'm gonna actually take a tiny bit of white like the tiniest bit of white on my dry brush. And I'm going to kind of add a little bit of like, um, what are these called? White streaks? <laughs> and just kind of layer them up because it kind of helps your eye not to look at all the yucky parts. I like it already. It's just like interest. And it, again, it like helps distract your eye from what's not working so hot. We can also like put a little white thing on the nose. It's like reflections, even though you don't need any reflections, if that makes sense. Same thing with like the eyes, like they're so um, flat. And so sometimes just adding like a hint of anything else just makes it come together. I also take the back of my paintbrush and even add some white up here. You can also do that with the paint pen. Just... Oops. Cuteness factor overload. I think I feel like his eyes need like one more dot. So I'm gonna grab my white paint marker. My Sharpie again. 
I'm not picky about my brands of paint parkers. As long as they work, I'm in. So I'm more, I do like nib size is super interest is super important. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do like another here. That looks kind of rando though. Great thing about white, if you make a mistake, you can just quick put black on top. Like this is so bumpy, the black is so bumpy lumpy. Boop, boop. Oh, the owl. So maybe putting some, I don't like that. Now it looks like he has stars, moons in his eyes. So again, you can just, luckily, you can just like, put black paint over that, obviously. Super easy, quick fix, thank goodness. But I might put some gray in the eyes because holy whites. And then that's like, oh, just kidding. Didn't mean to do that. Didn't really mean to do that either. I forgot that wasn't dry yet. Also why it's super good to dry between layers because then you don't have blending, you just have layering. All right, so just want to wrap up the eyes. Um, and then I think this cute little guy is done. I forgot his little feet too. We can have his little, one little foot down here. And I grabbed silver. <laughs> so it's the magical silver footed owl is what we've um, done today. Historically, very accurate. Thank you very much. So I feel like the only thing that we can do to kind of like just take this all the way home is to have a little bit of gray, kind of this in the same way that we had just a little bit of white in the scarfy scarf. We can take a little bit of like super light gray and um, just kind of cuts down on the solidness of the owl eye. Whoa, whoa, Those, the paintbrushes are too, too good, too sharp. That's like, Barely anything on my brush, so I'm just like rubbing it out. All right. Okay. I think our little owl guy is done. I want to put like stars around him now. Wouldn't that be cute? So you can stop or keep going as much or as little as you like. Remember, go to Artiza's video. The information for the giveaway is all in the description box. You know, you have to click the little arrow and it will expand the description box and that will tell you where you need to go to subscribe to Artiza's channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Then comment on their video. Then come back and comment on this video and let me know what you thought of the project and that you did the things so that you can win the both the I'm putting polka I'm putting stars in I can't help myself to win both the paint canvases as well as oh that totally took it home for me yes as well as the set of 14 um, acrylic paints from Arteza and also let me know for next week. I was gonna do all another owl, but Halloween themed. There was also a really cute deer I posted on Instagram. And I was like, we could do a deer. So let me know what you would like to do next week. Good luck on the giveaway. I will declare the winner in next week's video, which I publish new videos every Friday here on Mix Me, my mixed media channel. At Karen Campbell Draws, that's my drawing YouTube channel. I am doing a series of women's faces from around the world. So if you wanna join me on that channel, um, I know it's a lot of calls to action at the end of today's video, I apologize. So you can pick and choose if you want to, you know, where you wanna spend your time and energies. If you love giveaways, definitely do that. If you love to draw, come join me on my drawing channel. And if you love mixed media and painting and super fun, easy projects, then stay right where you are. And I will see you here again next Friday, same time. Same place. Have a great week. Love ya.